Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. It's December. Armageddon is upon us. Or is it? We'll see, but before December 28th of this year, the ATF is supposed to drop their final ruling on the proposed ban on these. Pistol stabilizing braces for ARs and AKs. This has been a long time coming. I did a video on it a few months ago, um, which was very popular, so thank you guys. Um, I'm gonna kinda do an update on that today, see where we're at, see what our options are. Um, none of the options available to us are very good at all. But before we get started, please like, please comment. Do you own any pistol stabilizing braces and what do you plan to do? I believe in freedom. Please share this video and please subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical. So the ATF does not like pistol stabilizing braces for some reason. Now, the way that the gun industry works, the ATF tries to make certain things illegal and the industry finds ways to comply with those laws, but still to bring us products that work well. Pistol stabilizing braces were originally made for injured veterans to be able to use an AR pistol one-handed more effectively, and they are very effective for that. But they're also approved for use for everyone, whether you have a disability or an injury or not, and they've become extremely popular. It is estimated that between 10 and 40 million of these have been sold, and I believe that number wholeheartedly. I own three of them myself right here. And I know plenty of other people that own them as well because short-barreled ARs are fantastic. I have one AR-15 with a 16-inch barrel and I have three with barrels shorter than that because 300 blackout, 9mm, they both make a lot more sense out of a shorter barrel. And even 5.56 with an 11.5-inch barrel is a very good very effective length to be able to do work with that. But in order to keep your firearms legal, which is what we're trying to do here, we have used stabilizing braces rather than stocks because your only other option is to SBR it, meaning turn it into a short barreled rifle, register it with the ATF under the National Firearms Act, and pay a $200 tax stamp. But with an SBR comes lots of other things that a lot of people don't really want to get into. For one thing, NFA items are much heav more heavily regulated in a lot of ways, and I'm not going to get into all of them. But for one thing, say you want to take something that you own, that you paid for, your personal property, and you're taking a driving trip going to another state. Well, you can take a pistol to another state with you without a problem. An NFA item, meaning a short barreled rifle in this case, you have to notify the ATF in advance and ask for their permission um, in order to take your own personal property with you somewhere. So there's a lot of reasons that people don't want SBRs. Now there, there are reasons that people do, you know, a stock works better than a brace, for sure. But these braces are definitely better than nothing. Um, Personally, I like the uh, SB Tactical SBA3 a lot. I've used it on a few different guns here, obviously, and it works well for my purposes. And AR pistols were not very popular before these stabilizing braces became popular. But since then, in the last 10 years, like I said, between 10 and 40 million of them have been sold and are being used responsibly by law-abiding gun owners all over the country. Well, Joe Biden has told the ATF that he wants to ban these things. And why? I'm not really sure. They're not used in any significant amount of crime, and it just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, but that's the ATF these days. They are not going after criminals that are doing violent crimes. They're going after law-abiding gun owners 
which makes absolutely no sense to me. I mean, there's a reason that people don't trust them and that they're afraid that their dogs are going to get shot. So the other thing with the NFA, you do have to, like I said, you have to pay a $200 tax. And you also have a wait period between filing your Form 1 or your Form 4. Form 1 is if you're going to build an SBR and in this case, like turn an AR pistol into an SBR, that'd be a Form 1. A Form 4 is if you are just going to buy a gun that is already a short barreled rifle or an NFA item of some kind. So there's a wait period with that. Well, as of later this month, this proposed rule in its final form is supposed to drop. And they've already published a Form 4499 that if you've been following this at all, you know what it is. It's a checklist point system. And if your AR pistol with a stabilizing brace attached gets more than four points, it is automatically considered a short barrel rifle and no longer is an AR pistol. And I'm gonna tell you right now, anybody with any kind of configuration like this, you're not gonna pass. Most AR pistols with braces are not gonna pass. Um, very few are, and they're gonna be the ones with the, the worst kind of braces, the ones that you don't wanna have, and you're not going to be able to have any of the actual features that you really want on an AR pistol to make it an effective weapon. Like this, I've built this as my home defense AR. And the way I have it set up is perfect for that. If I wanted it to pass form 4999, I would have to change this up in a lot of ways and make it not nearly as effective. Now, I spent good money on these things, as I'm sure you guys have as well. And now, and they've been sold legally. We've all bought them legally over the last 10 years. The ATF said they were legal. And in fact, they even said that it was okay if they were occasionally shouldered. And so we have all been purchasing and owning and using these things this entire time, thinking that we were following the law and doing nothing illegal, nothing wrong. And now they want to make all of us criminals just arbitrarily. And I have a major problem with that, as I'm sure a lot of you do too. And that's why I want to hear in the comments what you guys think about this and what you plan to do. Because these are our options, according to the ATF. Once this rule drops, and I haven't seen the rule in its final form yet, nobody has, so this is all kind of speculation, but once the rule drops, you can either destroy your firearm that you paid for with your hard-earned money, or in the case of this one, built yourself and paid for all the parts with my hard-earned money. You can destroy your firearm. Yeah, that's a good choice, right? You can turn it in to the authorities and never see your firearm again. It's about as good as destroying it. <laughs> or you can go through their amnesty registration period. Now, I have an issue with the word amnesty when it comes to this, and the reason why is this. Amnesty implies that we all were doing something wrong and that we knew we were doing something wrong, but that they're gonna give us a chance to make it right, even though that we were already breaking the law. And that is not the case in this case. None of us have been breaking the law, in fact, what we were doing, we were specifically doing in order to not break the law. That's why all of my AR pistols don't have vertical grips on them and don't have stocks on them because I was doing my very best not to break the law. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had these braces at all. We would have all put stocks, vertical grips, and been running around with illegal SBRs. But we weren't, right? That was the whole point of the braces, was to not break the law. And here we are, they're trying to say that they're gonna give us amnesty for, which implies that we knew that we were breaking the law, which would have made braces pointless because the whole point of braces was to not break the law, was to be in compliance with their arbitrary stupid rules. And SBR rules are absolutely stupid. It's the same thing with silencers. The fact that these things are extra regulated 
is absolutely ridiculous. And I've done a video about that too, about how I think the NFA is ridiculous. I'll link to it down below. But, you know, this thing isn't any more dangerous than this one with the 16 inch barrel. And putting a silencer, a suppressor, a can on something definitely doesn't make it any more dangerous. In fact, it to me, it's a safety device, helps save your hearing. So the fact that we have to go through this whole process, and I'm in the middle of that process right now, waiting for a suppressor for my 300 blackout, and pay extra money on top of already expensive products just to have things that shouldn't be regulated any more than any other firearms are is absolutely ridiculous to me. And now the fact that they want to put all of these other people, all these 10 to 40 million gun owners, some of which, like myself, have more than one of these, through this NFA process, whether they call it amnesty registration or not, you know, people are speculating that maybe they're going to waive the $200 tax stamp fee, maybe not. Um, I think the whole thing is a big trap. So you're going to fill out your form 4499 or 4999, excuse me. You have to send in pictures of your firearm in its current configuration with the attached stabilizing brace. And then they're going to decide whether you pass or fail and you're not going to pass. Um, in very, very rare cases, will any AR pistol with a brace actually pass? And they're going to tell you that you had an SBR. Well, now, <laughs> we don't know just yet, but I don't think that they're going to turn down the opportunity to make $200 times $40 million. Now you're going to owe them $200 per stabilizing brace. So for me, that would be $600. $600 out of my pocket for something that I have already owned and have already paid for is absolutely infuriating. But then we're going to have to wait wait to see if our tax stamp gets approved a stamp for a pistol with a brace not really an sbr stamp either that or they're just going to say oh it's an xbr you've had a short barrel rifle this whole time and you've known it and you've been in possession of an illegal sbr and you go straight to jail do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars. in fact pay us 200 dollars or ten thousand or whatever it is, 25,000 and 10 years in prison. It's, it, these laws are absolutely ridiculous. But this is not a good thing that's coming no matter what. But is it really coming? <sighs> I've been worried about this for a while. This is the second video I've done about braces. I hope to God that this, that the, at the last minute they're gonna pull this. They've done that in the past. You know, we've thought that something was going to happen with braces, I think, in 2020 as well. And then at the last minute, they pulled it. But this one is looking a lot more real. The fact that they asked for extra funding in order to be able to, like, beef up their system, you know, for all the applications for SBRs that they're, you know, expecting to get. The fact that they published Form 4999 and announced a amnesty registration period it's looking pretty real and uh, our options aren't good so i want to know what you guys are going to do um we'll see what happens there's already a lot of at least a few that i know of lawsuits coming down i think one from the goa gun owners of america one from the fpc firearm firearm policy um commission um Hopefully the NRA has our back. We'll see. Um, you know, uh, you know what we need is a class action lawsuit with 40 million of us that own these suing the ATF into oblivion. The NFA needs to go away. The ATF should go away. I, I, from what I've seen, they don't do anything effective in stopping crime or making anyone safer. All they do is go after law-abiding American citizens that happen to be gun owners. And, you know, this is in our Constitution, the Second Amendment. It specifically says, shall not be infringed. And to me, this is infringement in every possible form of the word or the idea of infringement. That's what this is. 
the fact that they're trying to go after this piece of plastic that sits on your buffer tube and a bunch of law-abiding people is absolutely ridiculous to me. Because the people that follow the law are the only ones that are going to go through with this registration period. Criminals aren't going to do it. And honestly, I don't think a lot of law-abiding gun owners are. I think a lot of people are getting fed up at this point. You know? Our, <laughs> our founding fathers didn't comply. Right? And, uh, and they wrote the Second Amendment into the Constitution. So I am definitely not telling you guys to comply with the BS that seems to be coming really soon. But I want to know what you guys are planning on doing. Let me know. Do you plan to comply? Are you going to are you going to change up the configuration of your AR pistols to make it pass their checklist, which really makes it a much less effective weapon? Are you just going to take the brace off it and run it with a bare buffer tube? Because that really sucks. I wouldn't have gotten AR pistols if I couldn't have a brace on them. I've got a friend that has one with just the buffer tube, and it sucks, man. Like, <laughs> the brace makes a big difference. Or are you just going to put a stock on it at this point because you're sick of what they're doing, and it's gotten to the point where it's not worth following their rules anymore? And when I say rules, I mean rules, because the ATF legally cannot make laws. Although, funny thing about that is, <laughs> the consequences of not following their rules carry the consequences of breaking laws, meaning fines and imprisonment. So, I, as you can tell, I'm a little fed up with this. This is a bit of a rant. It's, it's coming quickly, folks. The time is here. Let me know what you plan on doing. And, uh, yeah, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content. If you want more stuff like this, I put out a Second Amendment news story every Sunday. I've got a range video every Tuesday. I was doing build videos on Friday. I've got range videos on Friday, too, but three videos a week. Put out new content all the time. Constantly bringing in new guns, new products to review, bringing you guys Second Amendment news. So I hope you feel that it is worth subscribing. Please like, share this video. All this stuff really helps me to grow the channel. And it lets YouTube know that my videos are worth watching and then they get promoted more. And uh, comments really help in that way. Plus, I just love to know what you guys think about this stuff. Um, and I reply to every single comment if you haven't noticed. So I do love you guys. We'll see what happens here from Satu Tactical. Stay strapped or get clapped.